Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, all honor, all glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham Rakak Wadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah. And a sincere peace and salutation to all you hopeful let Agim out there pushing his word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah has created us to do. So he can wake up and seal the elect of the nation of Israel, which consists of you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and you Israelites who are scattered amongst the heathen nations that may look like the heathen nations, but your father's seed line of your lineage goes back to you being a so-called black, Hispanic, or Native American, one of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Hey, Shalom. It's your brother Halakia from the GMS Denver camp coming back once again through the spirit and power of Yahweh. Bahashim Yahweh Shout another lesson. And in this lesson, man, I want to entitle it for those of us who may have to perish. You see, because we know that because of this truth that we hold in uh through the Holy Spirit of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah, we're always at the threat of imminent death. You see? That's what it that's what comes with knowing that you're an Israelite in the in the kingdom of the wicked, man. You see? But I want to go into some uh, comforting scriptures to, to to just put us in the right mindset of even though we might have to perish, it's not the end all be all, man. You see? <laughs> and as an Israelite, you can't look at death as everyone else does. So this is meant to be a, a you know, a, a comforting lesson, man, for those of us who may have to perish or may have to lose, you know, loved ones. Or what have you, you know, but 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 at the end of the day, death is not the end all be all for an Israelite. And and this is and Esau is gonna to try to use this against people who really don't understand what's what's going on in the scriptures. You see the as a fear tactic. He gonna he gonna you know come with the threat of death for people who don't know Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah and they're gonna fold under the pressure. But for us who know Yahweh through his son Yahweh Shah we can't look at death the same way as these people do because we know and understand the operation of it. You see? So we want to start right here in uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 21. It says, Who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward, and the spirit of the beast that goeth downward to the earth? There it is. You see? When you perish, your body goes to the earth, and your spirit goes back to the heavens. It goes upward. The beast, they perish, their body goes into the earth, and their spirit goes down as well. That's what happens when you die. Now, let's get a, another one. Let's do a cross-reference. Yup, Ecclesiastes 12 and 7, it says, Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, because what? That's what our bodies are made of. Our bodies are made up of the earth, Right? It says what? So the body, it goes into the ground. You see that happen during the time of the funeral service. They lower the body into the ground. But guess what? Your spirit is, is back in the heavens with the Most High, as it tells you right here. And the spirit shall return unto the Most High who gave it. That's a cut to that bullshit uh, hell doctrine, man. Hell does not exist. That was a fear tactic used by the Roman Catholic Church to keep people in a state of fear. To keep people paying tithes, man. You see? There's no such thing as hell. You don't go to a place under the ground and burn forever. Everyone that's ever perished on this earth, their spirits have gone back to the spirit world. So don't let Esau uh, scare you with the threat of death, man. You go back to a state of being at rest. You go back to a state of being in peace. You see, no more suffering on the earth. You see that? That's what happens when you die. You're not taken to some un some some underworld to burn forever. That's not real. That's not true. So Ecclesiastes 12 and 7, one more time. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. And the spirit shall return unto the Most High who gave it. The Most High gave the body that you're in, the spirit that you, he's, he's put, he, he put your spirit into this body. The Most High gave you see, the spirit to animate the body. And when the body dies, after it gets old and weak and it expires, 
You see, as as we all do, your spirit returns back to the Heavenly Father, man. So that should be comforting to you guys who lose loved ones. They're not in hell burning. They're in the heavens at peace. Let's get that in Job 3 real quick. Let's show you right. Let's show you that real quick to cut that BS hell doctrine, man. This is Job chapter 3. And uh <laughs> Yeah, let's start at Job 3 and 11. It says, Why died I not from the womb? And Job was catching complete hell, man. He was going through it. And he wished that he was dead. Now listen to what he says. Job 3 and 11. Why did I not why died I not from the womb? Why did I not give up the ghost, which is the spirit, when I came out of the belly? He was saying he would, he would rather been a miscarriage. <laughs> you see? Why did the knees prevent me? Or why or why the breast that I should suck? For then for now should I have lain still and been quiet. I should have slept. Then had I been at rest. He's telling you what happens when you die. You don't go to a place under the ground and burn forever. You're you are you're you're at rest. You're quiet. You're asleep. You see, that's what they call it. And when you read about our forefathers in the history, it says what? Then shall you sleep with your fathers. You see? Meaning what? We, we will perish and, and our spirits will return back to the spirit world. You see? Going to a state of rest. Verse 14 says what? With kings and counselors of the earth, which built desolate palaces for themselves. You see that? You think every king on the earth was a righteous king? You had wicked kings out there. Look at the wicked kings of Judah. Look at the wicked kings of Israel. They all go to the same place. There's Rothschild that just died. Jacob Rothschild. Well, do you think he was a good person? No, he wasn't a good person. But guess what? His spirit still went back to the spirit world, to the father that gave it. As it just told us in uh, Ecclesiastes 12 and 7. You see? Job 3 and 14. With kings and counselors of the earth. Look at the, the, once again, the wicked kings, the wicked counselors. They all go to the same place when they die. That's that's the operation of it. Your, your body goes back into the earth and your spirit goes back to the heavenly father that gave it. And that goes for every spirit of man on the earth. They all, they all go back to the heavenly father in the heavens. Job 3 and 14. With kings and counselors of the earth which built desolate places for for themselves or with princes that had gold who fill their houses with silver or as a hidden untimely birth had i not been as infants which never saw light when you have a miscarriage an abortion you see a stillborn all those all those spirits that inhabit those inhabited those bodies, they return back to the spirit world to be at rest until the time for us re, until the time until it's time for them to be reincarnated into the earth. Listen, verse seventeen. There, the wicked cease from troubling. You see that, and there the weary be at rest. Where is this talking about? Back where the heavenly Father is in the spirit world. The wicked go there as well. What do you think? What, what all type of madness do you think Jacob Rothschild was pushing on this earth, man? Him and his wicked ass family. They were pushing nothing but wickedness forth. But they still go back to the spirit world to be in a state of rest. <laughs> Verse 18 says what? There, the prisoners rest together. They hear not the voice of the oppressor. You see that? Because all the cares that we have on the earth, they don't matter in the spirit world. So if you lose a loved one, if we lose brothers in this truth, man, hey, you know, have your time of mourning. But you don't, you, there's no need to be in a constant state of mourning because we know and understand what happens when our loved ones perish. They go back to the spirit world to be at rest until it's time for them to be reincarnated. You see? That goes for the righteous and the wicked. 
They all go back to the same place. Back to the Heavenly Father that gave them that spirit anyway. Verse 19 says what? The small and the great are there. The small and the great are there. And the servant is free from his master. You see? They don't go to hell. Hell does not exist. That's a false doctrine of the pagan Roman Catholic Christian church. You see? These are things that we have to keep in our mind when we're going through these things, when they threaten us with death. We understand the operation of it. They can't, uh, they can't uh, threaten us, oh, we're we going to we're gonna put you to death and now you're, you're, you're thinking of it like the the Roman the pagan Roman Catholic Christian Church where you're gonna burn forever so that makes you ter that's, that makes you afraid to die nah we go back to the spirit world we go back to the most high and there we're at rest reason I'm bringing this out because we're coming into a time of trouble where a lot of us are going to be scooped up <laughs> by Esau's troops if we if we're supposed if, if we are those men that have to fulfill those prophecies. Because any one of us could be put in that situation where we have to stay faithful unto death. And if that's the case, we understand how it, how it works. Our bodies will die, but our spirit will go back to the Heavenly Father. You see? So death, is some, is, 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 death isn't something that we should fear. And we have to get into that mindset. You see, that mind state as we move forward. That Esau should not be able to threaten you with death and you fold under that pressure because you know how it operates. You know how it works now. There's no place under the ground where you go and burn forever. You go right back to the Heavenly Father. You see to be in a state of rest as we just read here in Job 3. Now, let's go to... Uh, where did I want to go? Um... No. One moment. Let me see, man. Yeah, that's it right here. It says what? Those who die in, in, in Mashiach. So that was for people who just... Don't the first part is for people who don't understand the operation of death. You see, we're here to make it known unto you what happens. Your body goes to the dust. Your spirit goes back to the spirit world to be with the heavenly Father. Now, for us who are in this truth that believe in Yahweh Shah, this is what it tells us: those who died in Mashiach, and we we had brothers perish in this truth. Who were doing the work, who fervently believed in Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah, but guess what? We mourn for a time, you know. But guess what? We know that that brother is good. Because he died believing in the one you ignorantly called Jesus Christ, whose true name is Yahweh Shah. Verse 13 says what? But I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. That ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. See, the people who have no hope, they're, they're in a constant state of mourning, a constant state of sorrow, because they, they don't understand, you see? <laughs> they don't understand. They would wish for their loved one to come back and be down here catching all this hell instead of, instead of them understanding that it's okay, that they're at rest. See, we don't mourn as they do because we have hope. We, we understand and know that this is not our end all be all. We understand and know that we're going to see all of our loved ones again eventually in the kingdom of heaven. Every single last loved one that we lost in this truth, we're going to get them back. And that includes the brothers in this truth. You see, that's the hope that we have. <laughs> Verse 14. The kind. Call Allah Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah. Verse 14. For if we believe that Yahweh Shai died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Yahweh Shai will the Most High bring with them. And we have to keep this in our mind. Because we might see some brothers perish in this time of tribulation we're coming into. 
as they're made of, uh, made martyr, martyrs, you see, or what have you. But we know and understand that the brothers that have to suffer those 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 fates according to prophecy, they're going to be good. You see, they're going to come back with Yahweh Shah, and we will see them again. That's our hope. Death really doesn't exist for an Israelite that believes in Yahweh Shah, man. And this is why we tell a lot of you other Israelite groups out there, you really don't understand what this is all about. Because you don't have that type of hope, even though you know you're an Israelite. You don't have the hope that you're going to see your loved ones again, or that that uh, uh, death really is a, <laughs> it doesn't apply to the Israelites as it does to everyone else. Especially when you believe in Yahweh Shah. You see, that's why when you lose a loved one or you, or when we're going through this hell and you might have to see one of your brothers die, you're going to just lose it. Because you really don't have that hope. Because you really don't believe in Yahweh Shah as it is written. You see? So 1 Thessalonians 4 and 14, one more time. 4 and 14. One more time it says what? For if we believe that Yahweh Shah died, and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Yahweh Shah will the Most High bring with him. You see that? For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord Yahweh Shah shall not prevent them which are asleep. Exactly. You see? <laughs> Everybody who perishes in the faith in, in the faith of Yahweh Shai, whether that be me, you see, or any other brother, if we have to perish from this flesh and it go back to the earth and our spirit go back to the heavens, if we perish in faith in our Lord Yahweh Shai, guess what? We're going to be with him on that chariot to return to gather the rest of the remnant. And we're going to return back and, and what? We're going to return in that new glory. Because if we perish in the faith in Yahweh Shah, when we go back to the spirit world, we're going to be brought into that second co covenant. We're going to be brought into that glory. When we come back to retrieve the rest of the remnant, you see, <laughs> we're coming back in the fullness of glory. And, 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 and Yahweh Shah is going to bring the rest of the remnant into that glory. Because death doesn't exist for us, man, because of our faith in Yahweh Shah. So once again, if you're put in a situation where Esau is threatening you with death, and we know that according to prophecy, that will be the case for some of us, including myself. You see, this is what you have to put yourself in these situations, mate. You have to when you read those prophecies, matter of fact, let's get it real, let's get one real quick. When you read Revelation 2 and 10, it says, What? Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. That ye may be tried. You're going to be tested. Your faith has to, be, has to be tested. Tried as gold in the fire, right? And ye shall have tribulation ten days. And that's just for a certain amount of days. This is going to be a complete number of days. However long the most I see is fit to test your faith. That's how long we're going to be in there, right? But it says what? Be thou faithful unto death. And I will give thee a crown of life. So... Any one of us could be put in this situation where we have to be tried even unto death. We have to we have to keep that faith all the way through, knowing and understanding that because I believe in Yahweh Shah, I cannot die, even though my body perishes. Our spirits live forever. And once my spirit leaves this body, it's going to be brought into that everlasting tabernacle that the most I promised to bring us into. You have to understand these things, man. You have to understand this and fully believe in it. You have to believe in Yahweh Shah. You guys talking about you don't worship Yahweh Shah. You don't. <sighs> Y'all don't get it, man. You see, because you don't believe in Yahweh Shah, you don't have any victory over death. You see that? You don't worship Yahweh Shah. You don't have any victory over death. So death does exist for you. <laughs> But for those who believe in Yahweh Shah, it doesn't exist for them, man. That's why Yahweh Shah said, what? He that believeth on me, in the, in the last days I shall raise him up into everlasting life. Because of their faith that they have in Yahweh Shah. 
So when we put when when we put any when we're put in these situations and we're faced with death, don't let it scare you. Don't let it make you fearful. And may how about some Yahweh shot make us even bolder in that time because we know and understand what it really is. Death is a possibility. Let me say, perishing from this flesh is a possibility for all of us. Even even you Israelites who don't even fully believe in the true doctrine. Death is a possibility for you because what? You know that you're an Israelite. But the difference between us and them is what? Our hope that we have in Yahweh Shai. And because we have this hope, he's going to raise us up into everlasting life. It doesn't end with, with this body that we're in right now perishing. You see? This is just the body that the Most High gave us until it's time for us to be transitioned into that righteous, immortal, everlasting body. You see, another one is Revelation. Oh, 20, I'm tripping. 20 and, six, 20 and 4, I'm sorry. Revelation 20 and 4. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh and for the word of the Most High, which had not worshipped the beast. So we're not down with this system. Neither his image. You see the way of life that this system promotes. You see, and you see it. The rainbow flag agenda. The transhuman agenda <laughs> where they're trying to put devices all up in your body to turn you into a damn cyborg. We're not down for eating fake foods or lab-grown meat. You see? all Just all the madness that Esau is pushing forth. We're not for that. That's the image. It says what? And neither had received this mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, which goes into what? The MOTB, which is going to, which is going to come in two forms. The RFID, CHIP, and also that Neuralink that they just put into to a human test subject last month. This is what this devil is coming with. And guess what? The remnant of the nation of Israel, beginning with the men of the Lord, we're not going for that bullshit, man. So that is going to cause us to be what? Beheaded. If we find ourselves in that situation. Once again, I put myself in that because there's a possibility that all of us, any one of us, could be faced with that. You have to put yourself in the midst of this prophecy when you read it. That You could be reading about yourself being in, in, in the guillotine. Don't think that it can't happen to you because someone has to fulfill that prophecy for the most high to be faithful and true. You see? <clears throat> so with that being said, we understand the operation of death. We understand that through our, our Lord Yahweh Shai, it doesn't end with our, with our heads being chopped off. This body just dies, but our spirit is going to be transitioned into those everlasting tabernacles. But we're just going in the aspect of those brothers. Hey, and some of you sisters, hey, you sisters want to be down, right? Some of you sisters, hey, y'all going to find yourself in the guillotine. Being tried. Right? But it says what? Which had not worshipped beast, the beast. Neither his image, neither received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Mashiach a thousand years, meaning, meaning what? They were part of that first dominion. You see, these are men who are part of the 144,000, the governing body. You see, you women, you're not a part of that governing body. But you will be tied to some of these men who are a part of it. You see? But once again, this is a possibility for any one of us having to perish this way. But we're here to comfort you and let you know that what? It doesn't end there, man. It, because of our faith in Yahweh Shai, it doesn't end with, with our spirit perishing from this body. Now let's go back to Revel, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And... Uh, 14, we'll start at 14 again. 1 Thessalonians 4 and 14. 
For if we believe that Yahweh died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Yahweh will he bring with them. You see that? If you have faith in the resurrection of our Lord Yahweh you never die. <laughs> you never, you, you, hey, you're an, you're an immortal right now, spiritually. Physically, your flesh still can die, but you, if you have that faith in Yahweh Shah that he rose from the dead, that the Most High raised him up after the third day, hey, that's an immortal, that's, that's immortal thinking right there, man, which is going to cause you to be brought into everlasting life. You see, verse 15 says what? For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord Yahweh Shah shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend with, from heaven with a shout, with the voice with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of the Most High, and the dead in Mashiach shall rise first. You see that? <laughs> because they never really die. Death is not the end all, so, so, let's say, so-called death is not the end all be all for believers in Yahweh Shah, man. Verse 17 says what? For we which are alive and remain, those brothers and sisters who didn't have to go through those uh, uh, prophecies of being beheaded or uh, uh, being tried even unto death. You see? They're going to be caught up. It says what? Shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. Meaning what? You're going to be beamed up <laughs> into that chariot to do what? To be changed. To be changed, man. You see, it says what? To meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. And this is what we do because it can get heavy in the flesh when you think about these things, man. When you meditate on the many different ways we could, you know, go out. We don't know what it means. We know we're going to be cast into prison and tried, being tested. Even not to death, but we don't know what type of shit we're gonna have to suffer. We just know we're gonna have to suffer. But to 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 bring it into perspective by giving us by by pushing forth these words of comfort, it it causes you to just calm down and just let it. Hey man, the Lord got it. He gave me the strength to un, to endure, you know. But this is just the reality of it, man. So that's why we comfort one another with these words. Letting each other know that this is not the end all be all if we have to perish from the flesh. If we have to fulfill those prophecies of being those men and, 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 and some of you women too. Having to perish from this flesh. But hey, it, it's just, uh, we're just the first ones to transition into those new bodies. Because what does it tell us in the next chapter? Is it, no, it's 2 Thessalonians chapter 5 if I am mistaken. No, 1 Corinthians 5. Oh, my tripping. No. Oh, what is it? Um. Second Corinthians five one. It says what the temporal and the eternal. This is what you have to understand as well. What we're in right now is the temporal. The the the, the body that dies. You see. And why does this body die? It's because we sin. So that's why the Most High has promised to bring us into that everlasting covenant. You see, which entails us being given new bodies. Bodies that never sin, so that means we will never die. You see that? Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is about to bring us into the into the eternal man. So it says what? Verse one. For we know that if our earthly house, earthly house, okay, I know it's one of them. Says what? For we know that if our earthly, earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, 
we have a building of the Most High. And house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. What is that? That new body. So if this if this earthly body dissolves, you see, and perishes, we're going to be translated or transitioned into that eternal body that's waiting for us in the heavens. You have to under you have you have to understand these things. So when Esau comes with the threat of death, you won't be shaken or moved. You'll be firmly rooted in the faith because you know and understand, you see, <laughs> what the Most High set aside for us. That this, this, because we're in this, this flesh doesn't mean it's the end all be all. This is temporary. We're, we're going to be transitioning into the eternal, you see, very soon. Even if we have to perish from the flesh. You see that? Verse 2 says what? For in this we groan earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our houses, which is from, with our house, which is from heaven. That everlasting body, man. <laughs> so Esau, if you don't, if you don't tell me where this, this, this man is, I'm going to put you to death. Nigga, do it. Go ahead. Squeeze the trigger. <laughs> do what you got to do because we know and understand this ain't the end all be all for us. We're going to be brought into a higher glory. This is why I started it off with going into those scriptures that show you what happened after you perish from the flesh. Your flesh dissolves back into the earth and your spirit goes back to the spirit world, to the heavenly father. So you don't have to be afraid when Esau threatens you with death because you know he's going to do it. You know he's going to do it. You see, probably put a gun to your head or once again, you might be in a guillotine or they might have you in a torture device or whatever it may be. Just pray to your Hawashah, man. Pray to your Hawashah that he gives you the strength to endure whatever we got to go through. Knowing and understanding that we have an eternal body waiting for us. See, these other camps ain't going into this, man. They're not getting their congregation prepared for what we have to endure as believers, man. Everybody's just thinking that this is just a time to be in mirth and just, just, just want to... Be cute and be a part of so, some so, some trend or whatever they're thinking, man. This is real life, man. And shit is about to get very heavy as we move uh, uh, deeper into this year. So you must know and understand these things, man. And be fully persuaded in your mind. Because this is, this, this is not a fucking game. It's not a game. So 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 2, it says, For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. If so be, that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle, which is this weak, fleshly, wicked body, do groan. It says what? Being burdened. Not that we should be unclothed, but be clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life. And this is what we're hoping for. So, <laughs> hey, and that's another thing, bro. We, we coming into these situations where, like I said, any one of us can be put up under that guillotine, nigga. Put, man, pull that goddamn switch. Hit the button. You see? Because we know and understand what awaits us, man. You see? Go ahead and chop my damn head off so I can be upgraded into God mode, man. You see, so I can come into the Godhood. Hey, Yahweh I'm coming to meet you, bit bro. Finally. That's the spirit that the men of the Lord are going to be in. Calling upon the name of the Lord. You see, my mate, calling upon, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> to the point to where you calling upon the name of the, they got you up under the guillotine. And it's just a crowd of people. And you calling upon the name of the Lord. The building might start shaking and rumbling and doing all type of shit. You see? They pull the lever, they chop your head off, you get transitioned to the to the new body, and, and, and your how shot just waiting there, just waiting for you. You see? Good job, my good and faithful servant. You still, you still, you still firm to the end. You see? 
this might sound far fetched to people outside of the truth, man. But for us that believe, hey, this is reality, man. This is what it really is. You see? We have to be taken out of this body to be brought into immortality. And the most high, he's going to do it how he wants to do it. You know, we just, we just got to pray for the strength that he give up, gives us what, it, what we need to endure. You know, verse five says what? Now, now he that have wrought us for the self same thing is the most high. Who also have given us the earnest of the spirit to do what? He's given us the earnest of the spirit to know these things, man. You see? Once again, to be fully persuaded in, in these things and just cont continue on the straight gate, walking in boldness, walking in faith, and just trusting that the Most High is going to do what he said he's going to do. That everything is, is already laid out according to what the Most High said, said it was. And that that's all you can do. Just trust in Yahweh Bajim Yahweh Shai. You see? <laughs> Hey, you gotta. T we're about to have to take the, the 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 fucking biggest leap of faith in these times of tribulation. <laughs> we're about to come into, man. <laughs> hey, you gonna, you gonna have to just goddamn jump out the window with it, man, and trust that the Most High is gonna catch you. <laughs> you see, for real, because we believe the words that's written. We haven't seen any of these things, but we know it's gonna happen just like the Most High said it is. And because we move in that spirit of faith, hey, we're going to be good. Now, <laughs> and this is just, just uh, this was inspired, you know, always through the spirit. But my woman, she she's going through some, some heavy shit with her family, you know, with a loved one. You know, I was just trying to comforted and just put it in my spirit to just put this out on wax you know just to have us mentally prepared for what we're gonna have to endure and seeing <laughs> and seeing just complete chaos break out and a lot of death taking hold and even us being put in some put into some situations where once again any one of us can be transitioned from this body to the next but that should be comforting because we know that with this body dying and body perishing, it ain't the end all be all for us, man. You see? So, 1 Corinthians 15 and 50, it says what? Now I say, brethren. Yep. Now I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of the Most High. Neither doth corruption inherit in corruption. So, that's another thing, man. When we put into these situations where we might have to be beheaded or we might have to be tortured to death, you got to know and understand this body was never going into the kingdom of heaven anyway. This body was temporary. This ain't even how we really look for real. <laughs> you see? This was just a vessel, a husk that Most High gave us to do the job on this side. <laughs> you see? Our real body is what's waiting for us. So you have to understand that as well. And once again, a lot of these congregations out here are not getting their people prepared to have to do that. This body is not going into the kingdom of heaven as it is written. The, this corruptible body is not going into the, into the incorrupt kingdom. So you have to get that in. This body was never going. <laughs> you see? It says what? Verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery we shall not all sleep not all of us are going to perish but you have to get in your mind that hey i could be one of those ones that have to suffer through those prophecies of what having to die for this truth not all of us some of us but still we don't know who so you have to put yourself in that you see mental space that hey it could be this could be talking about me right 1 Corinthians 15 and 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. And they get a precept, you see, that goes back to what it said in Job, that he should have been asleep, you see, meaning going back to the spirit world or, or perishing, you see. 
but we shall all be changed. Every single last one of the remnant is going to be changed. No one that believes in Yahweh Shah is going up into that chariot in this body. You see, our spirits are going to be taken out of this body to be put into that immortal body. So if Esau threatens to take you out of this flesh by trying to put you to death, trying to put you to death, fuck it. And that's easy to say right now because I don't have a gun pointed to my head. But like we always pray, may Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah strengthen us and allow us to stand in great boldness as our righteous forefathers before us so we can fulfill everything that we need to fulfill, man, and continue to move in that spirit of righteousness. Because we all must be changed. Because what? Transitioning out of this flesh until the is, is not the end all be all. Verse 52 says what? In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And we shall all be changed. Meaning what? We're going to come into that state of incorruption, into those new bodies, upgraded. Verse 53 says what? For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. You must believe these things wholeheartedly. This mortal flesh that you're walking around in now. It was never going up into the chariot anyway. So when we put in these situations, it is okay. I'm getting a new body anyway. I'm going into that body that was waiting on me for this entire time. My true body has been waiting on me to... Has been waiting on my spirit to return back to it this entire time. And, and hey, here we go. We're finally going home, coming back into that glory, man. You see, being upgraded like our Lord Yahweh Shah before us. So this mortal must put on immortality. Verse 54 says what? So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Because we're going to be brought into that second covenant, which is the victory that we receive through our faith in our Lord Yahweh Shah. The victory over death, man. Once and for all. Verse 55 says, well, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is, is sin. <clears throat> And the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to the Most High, which giveth us the victory through our Lord, Yahweh Shah Mashiach. Because what? All those who have faith in Yahweh Shah and have to perish from this flesh, they have the victory. And if we're still here believing in Yahweh Shah, we're going to be beamed up to receive the victory. Changed, brought into immortality, brought into the fullness of the second covenant. You see, to never die again, man. This is why Esau can't scare us with the threat of death. Because we know that through our faith in Yahweh Shah, we never die. You see? Hell, even if our lovers have to perish on this side, we're going to see them again in the kingdom of heaven. Because every Israelite is going to be brought into that state of immortality. Every single last one. Every single last Israelite, every single last Israelite is going to be brought into that state of immortality eventually in the kingdom of heaven. So all the family members that we lost, the friends that we're about to lose because they refuse to repent and they want to continue on the wickedness, the Most High is going to put them to death. Must know and understand that, but we will get them back in the kingdom of heaven completely righteous and in their right mind. And, 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 hey, and they're going to be immortal as well. This is the hope that's set before us. You see? This is our hope. Death does not have the victory over the believers of Yahweh Shah. You see? We have victory over it through our faith in our Lord and Savior, man. Verse 58 says what? Well, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, 
always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, man. So you have to understand these things. It's, it's, it's very important that you get a, a full, full understanding of what it really is. Our body perishes. Our spirit goes back to the Heavenly Father. There is no hell. Esau should not. If you believe in Yahweh, Esau should not be able to uh, make you fear death because we understand how it operates. We understand how it works. We understand that through our faith in Yahweh, we could never die. Even though we have to, even if we have to perish from this flesh, if that be the case, we're going to be transitioned and and, and and made like our Lord is, man. Matter of fact, let's get that one. Let's get a uh, Philippians three. Yup. Philippians three and twenty. It says, "For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Yahweh Shammashiach." Who shall change our vile body? You see that? If you how if you know your how is coming to change a vile body, why would you be afraid of death? Even if you have to perish before your how gets here, there's no need to be afraid of death because we just read read first the dead in your how we just read that the dead in your how shall rise first. You never die when you have faith in your how you see that? The dead shall be raised first to be brought into uh, in corruption. And then they who are, are alive and remain shall be raised up with them. Yahweh Shah is going to bring all his true followers into this, man. So there is no reason to fear death. And, and when Esau threatens you with it, man, stand, hey, hold your nuts. Tell this devil, fuck you. We'll be back. Because that's just the truth of it. We'll be back. On a completely different level. Something the world has never seen before, man. Psalms 3 and 21. Who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. You see that? That's what Yahweh Shah is going to bring us into. According to the working whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. You see, so that's why we continue to go into these things, man. So it can be firmly rooted in our minds. So when we're faced with these different situations, maybe that be the guillotine or the firing squad or the electric chair, lethal injection or whatever. We know and understand that through our faith in Yahweh Shai, all that's really happening is. We're being faithful unto death to receive that crown of life. Our spirit is not dying. <laughs> We're just being upgraded, man. And you have to have that full understanding of it so you can endure it when you're faced with it, man. Through the spirit and power of Yah, Bashim Yahweh Shah. So, Lord willing, that was comforting to the elect, man. I know it comforted me. You know, I said that's what we're here for. To comfort one another, to exhort one another, to continue on in the faith. You know, and to let each other know, man, it's going to be okay. <clears throat> the Most High has given us all that we need to continue to stand in great boldness. You see, through faith in His Son, man. And so with that, I'm going to end it by giving off all praise, all honor, all glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham, Rekakwadash. And double honors to the apostles and others of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth. According to the Bible, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah, and a sincere peace and salutation to all you hopeful of the Akim out there, pushing his word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah has created us to do. With that, I'm going to say Shalom, Wa, Abba, Abba.